When you're not dumping word vomit out of your mouth, are you dumping it in your head? Do you know some people don't word vomit in their own brains? Okay, I think this has gotten away from me. What I'm trying to ask is, do you have an internal dialogue? Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. And today, we're talking about inner dialogue, also known as internal narrative or internal monologue or inner voice. Can we just please pick a term and use it? So what is internal dialogue, monologue, narrative? voice. Simply put, it's the voice inside your head, the one that sounds like you, not the one that always tells you to do evil things. <laughs> and we all have that one, right? It was just back in January of 2020, you know, before the world ended, <laughs> Oof. that this topic started to trend. Do you have an inner voice? Good job being on top of training videos, Jonathan. <laughs> well, hey, I just started this channel like a month and a half ago or something, so relax. <laughs> Some people do not hear a voice in their head. In fact, those people generally have kind of a mashup of thoughts and have to verbally verbalize, actively verbalize. That's what I was going for. They have to actively, they have to actively verbalize those words and thoughts before it makes any sense. Many of us can hear our own thoughts as if we were having a conversation with ourselves. I, for one, have this inner voice, and it's basically like this all the time. It's like the 80s, I think. I think it's like the best, best for music for people. Friends, but just like friends, all the like synth voice stuff. I mean, really some of the best music, music that ever came really out was like Pat like, Benatar and Kenny Loggins. Can, can we not get some really more? I mean, Pat Benatar and Kenny Loggins, why didn't they ever do a duo It would have been the greatest 80s song of all time. Russell Hurlbert is a professor at the University of Nevada, and he's been studying this topic for 40 years. Before cell phones were invented, Hurlbert invented and p patented uh, a device that would sit on people. <laughs> I'm stupid. Patented and invented a, a device that his users or test subjects could wear that would beep at random. When these devices would beep, the user or test subject would need to write down their thoughts that they were having in that precise moment. And they would have to do their best to very clearly state what was going on in their head. Hurlbert and his researchers found that many of the subjects struggled to clearly describe what their thoughts were. When he asked them for specific words or phrases, they simply just couldn't answer. He said that during this research, the users would find that they thought, well, I thought I had an inner voice, but apparently I don't. The results of the study concluded that 26% The results of the study concluded that 26% of the time the subjects had no inner thoughts, while 75% of the time the users did. According to Holbert's research in his six books that he's written over the years, he's concluded that there are five types of thinking: inner speaking or inner monologue, inner scene or visual imagery, feelings, unsymbolized thinking, and sensory awareness. Inner speaking is your inner voice. It's hearing yourself or somebody else's voice inside your head uh, or recalling a number audibly in your head. Inner scene is seeing a visual representation of your thoughts. So maybe a photo, almost like a, a photo of a place that you visited in the past. Feelings, a conscious experience of emotional process such as feeling sad after a loved one has passed away. Unsymbolized thinking, so there's just nothing going on in there, uh, like pouring a cup of coffee in the morning without telling yourself that you're gonna do that. You're just kind of doing it subconsciously. And sensory awareness, now this is a fun one. Paying attention to a sensory aspect for an unimportant reason, such as I'm listening to you talk or you're listening to me talk, but maybe you caught that glass reflection and that's what you're focused on. And I can tell you for myself that all of that is happening all the time. I'm constantly hearing my own voice or if I'm reading somebody else's text, I, I can hear their voice. For example, if I need to recall the way text was typed out and there's a hard break at the end of the sentence, goes into the second line, I may actively pause to get back to the second line. And those that don't have that inner voice might say things like, you know, they don't think or relish in bad memories or bad thoughts because they're just not thinking about it. If they're thinking, it's probably while they're speaking. 
When growing up, you may have heard an adult say, speak before you think. Nope, think before you speak. Some people just can't do that. And these people that don't have the inner voice or monologue have said that in movies or shows when there's the voiceover of the character's thoughts, they always thought that was just for TV, that it's not real. And many of us, like me, that's nonstop. Check on your friends that are known for speaking their mind. These may be the people that don't have that inner voice because they're just saying as they're thinking. And for those of you that don't have the inner voice, find the friends like me that always seem to be kind of stuck or daydreaming or looking at something or maybe I was distracted and I didn't hear what you said because there's so much going on in here. So what's it actually like for those that do not have an inner voice? In an article by Madison Epting, she stated that she's one of those people that has no inner voice and always thought it was weird growing up. And to get a better understanding of what that was like, this is what she had to say. My responses to information in any facet come in two forms, auditory and visual. So for myself personally, I see the words a person is speaking as they would appear being typed on the page of a computer screen and never once will hear the person's voice speaking them nor my own. If a person expresses a feeling of heartbreak, I do not replay the words in any one voice inside of my head, but rather picture a physical heart splitting in two along with a sound that can be associated with the thought, perhaps stepping on eggshells or the sound of a steel-toed boot smashing a fragile object resting on the ground. And for me that has that, I... I just, I hear the voice. I replay those voices. I, I can replay an entire conversation that I've had with somebody. It's weird. So next time you ask somebody, so next time you ask someone, what are you thinking? And they say, nothing. Who knows? They might actually be telling the truth. As always, thanks for watching. And what did you learn today? Do you have an inner voice? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to know your thoughts, if you have any, or your visual representation of what's going on in your brain. I don't know how you do it. Let me know.